the channel length modulation. So this is the third effect. So what we had seen is uh, the current expression, the short channel current expression, which is attributed only towards the mobility degradation as well as the velocity saturation effect. This one is uh, talks more about the, uh, the channel length modulation. That was the third uh, uh, non-ideal effect, uh, which we had seen in the last lecture. So what it really means is, uh, if I increase this VDS value, so that means the drain is becoming more and more positive. So this particular side is becoming more and more positive with respect to the source and assuming that the source and then the body are at the same potential, right? So if, uh, you know, this uh, source also, I'll make it like a ground here. So the ground and ground. So what it really means is that drain is becoming more and more positive thereby it is going to attract uh, more of the uh, majority carriers. In this case, it will be the electrons which will be attracted towards the positive potential side, thereby leaving uh, the lot of lot amount of immobile positive ions, right? So on the other side of the junction, a similar effect will be seen and then we will have lot many uh, immobile negative ions. So this particular region, right, closer to the drain side, that is going to increase if we make this VD value to be larger and larger, right? So if the drain is becoming more positive and positive, we will get this particular, um, the depletion region to be larger and larger. And that is kind of represented by this LD uh, variable. So the effective length decreases as I increase the drain potential, right? So that is how, you know, if, if we increase this, uh, uh, effect or rather decrease this effective channel length uh, and then we know that the drain uh, the current the IDS current is uh, is a function of 1 by L right so if I take the long channel current or the short channel current you will see that uh, you know the on the denominator side we have this uh, channel length which I can now call it as the effective channel length and this effective channel length as it uh, decreases because of the uh, you know higher uh, uh, drain potential this depletion region is going to increase and thereby LD is going to increase and L effective channel length is going to decrease. With the decrease, this current is going to increase, right? So LD is a function of VDS, that's what I've written and hence ID uh, varies with the VDS now. Hence ID saturation varies and does not remain constant post the saturation. And that's why in the post saturation, even if I keep on increasing the VDS value, that means the drain potential keeps on increasing this uh, depletion region length uh, increases and thereby the effective channel length decreases and effective channel length decreases thereby the current increases, right? So that's why we see a slope, a slight slope instead of a constant line after the VDS saturation, right? So the current which we had expected that it should be a straighter line, a saturation uh, current point, but it is actually varying with a slight slope. Now we need to understand what is the, you know, accommodating uh, the channel length modulation uh, uh, index or the effect channel length uh, modulation effect, what is the actual expression of the current? So uh, there is a particular expression which is, uh, uh, which is given in some of the references. That's, so that's what I have stated here. So IDS saturation, I've just taken a long channel example, the similar example, you know, the, uh, the similar expression you can arrive at in the short channel also. But I've just taken, just for uh, the easy referencing, I've taken the long channel expression, which is nothing but IDS saturation of the long channel. Uh, if I do a differentiation, first order differentiation with respect to VDS, I'll get, uh, you know, the same equation. So IDS uh, saturation is nothing but mu WC oxide by 2L, VGS minus VT, the whole square. So if I do a first order differentiation with respect to VDS, uh, I'm going to take, uh, you know, L effective, you know, this particular value, uh, Okay, let me pick up a pointer. Okay, yeah, this particular value, del, um, the channel length is now a function of uh, VDS and that's why uh, uh, it will be the first order differentiation of L effective uh, by VDS, right? Uh, the first order differentiation. L effective is nothing but uh, the overall channel length minus the LD region and if I do a differentiation with respect to VDS, it is nothing but uh, uh, the LD uh, with respect to the first order differentiation of LD with respect to VDS. So what it implies is, uh, you know, it, it has an opposite polarity. So what uh, what it implies is if LD keeps on increasing, if LD keeps on increasing, the L effective decreases. Makes sense. So if I put this particular second equation in the first equation, so I will get this for first particular equation as uh, the first order IDS saturation long channel current is nothing but, uh, so this, if you look into this particular expression, right, this is nothing but uh, 
uh, the IDS saturation current itself. So that's what I've written here. And then there is a negative sign here, negative sign here, which uh, you know becomes positive. And then we finally get uh, 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 this one del LD uh, by del VDS. And then there is an uh, L effective square here. So it is basically IDS saturation uh, divided by L effective. Okay, so this is what we get moving forward. So if you have uh, looked into, uh, you know, especially in the VJT amplifier, if I draw the output current uh, with respect to the, uh, you know, with the VC voltage, the collector emitter voltage, and then in the output current, we will get uh, the slope of that particular, uh, you know, the collector current. If I actually take it back, all right, to an imaginary point in the negative uh, VC value, we will get an early voltage. So similarly, we have the for the for the same uh, NMOS transistor, we can actually draw the output current with respect to the output voltage. So IDS, and if I draw it uh, against VDS, uh, especially for the short channel uh, model uh, where the channel is actually you know for the transistor where the channel length is uh, very small, then we will have a slope here, a defined slope here, which will actually meet into the x-axis called as VA, which is nothing but the early voltage. Right now, VA by definition, it is given by, it is basically a process parameter. Uh, and by uh, definition, it is given by the L effective uh, uh, multiplied by uh, the differential uh, or rather the change, uh, the, the incremental change in the VDS with respect to the incremental change in the LD. Right, so a change of uh, whatever 0.1 volts uh, and the change of the LD value, how, however it changes, uh, with respect to the effective channel length, right? So that is given by, that is also defined by the VA, the early voltage. So if I put this particular expression, right? I need to put this particular expression, somehow bring this VA parameter into the uh, current uh, uh, expression. Now the current expression, actually, if I consider the long channel or whatever the short channel, I can write that particular expression, which is nothing but, you know, here in this case, I've taken the long channel, uh, mu WC oxide by 2 L effective VGS minus VD the whole square because it's a saturation current and then of course we are interested in the saturation region the slope of the saturation uh, region what happens to the slope of the current in the saturation region so up till now up till here it is nothing but uh, you know this this particular value is nothing but the saturation current uh, equation after this uh, so we have just introduced to accommodate the change uh, in the depletion region uh, length, which is having an effect on the effective channel length and thereby having an effect on the current. So we have introduced uh, this particular expression, one plus uh, the delta IDS divided by the delta VDS multiplied by VDS by IDS, right? So this one uh, is nothing but, you know, whatever current expression we have, plus the delta changes here, plus the delta changes here. What we are assuming is, this, this particular expression, delta IDS by delta VDS into VDS by IDS, uh, it will be a scalar factor. It will not have any units and it will have a very minimal changes, right? So we are basically, what we are saying is, uh, uh, if we change the VDS minutely, what is the effect that we are going to have in the IDS value, right? So that's what, you know, if, uh, the change in the IDS value, it turns out to be very, very small, but uh, overall, the current expression will be nothing but the same expression multiplied by one plus some value, 0 0.001 or whatever, 0 .0, 0 0.0001 or something like that. So this expression is likely to give me a very small value, but with the help of this particular uh, expression, I can bring in the early effect factor, right? Early effect factor, which will indirectly give me uh, the L effective, which is nothing but uh, L minus LD, right? So if I use this particular expression, so that's what I've done. So uh, the same expression goes here, mu WC oxide by two L effective into VGS minus VD the whole square multiplied by one plus uh, uh, VDS uh, by VA. So this whole expression, uh, uh, you know, uh, VDS is this particular VDS. So this particular term, right is considered as VA. So, right. And if I look into this particular previous slide expression, del IDS, so this is one equation I have, right. And this is the second equation I have. And if I put one of um, both the equations in here, I should get the VA value, 
Right. So what it says is, uh, hence the idea saturation increases linearly post uh, the saturation. And then this particular uh, VA value, uh, you know, 1 by VA can also be written as uh, nothing but a lambda value. Right. So instead of a VA value, I can also write it as uh, 1 by lambda. So VA can also be rewritten as 1 by lambda value. So again, this, uh, you know, instead of lambda, I'll write it as lambda constant. So this lambda is not that lambda of the, uh, the design rule. You know where we had uh, two lambda is equal to 50 nanometer right so that is not the one this is another constant value just just as a constant so va is basically nothing but a uh, uh, you know it is a uh, the fabrication constant uh, it it really doesn't uh, uh, so that's a constant value so an increase in the id vds value right is likely to give me an increase in the uh, ideas so that's why our, uh, the saturation profile is uh, uh, we have a positive slope there